Oder? Ja. Uh, Mr. Ajay? Yes, sir. Will you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, I'm Mohammed Azad. Uh, I grew up in Chennai and uh, graduated from IIT Madras in 2018 in electrical engineering. Be a little louder. Oh, sure. Uh, I'm Azad. I gra grew up in Chennai and graduated in 2018 from IIT Madras in electrical engineering. Uh, I worked for about a year in the field of uh, projection display. And since 2019, I have been preparing exclusively for uh, Indian Forest Service. Civil service, you have appeared also? I have appeared, but I haven't. Uh, I have focused more on Indian Forest Service. Okay. What are your hobbies? Trekking in the hills around Chennai. Yes, sir. So I like to trek. Uh, Attending beach cleanup and lake cleanup. Yes, sir. This was during my. What is this beach cleanup? Uh, so uh, we, we uh, during weekends we gather in the uh, usually in beach, Pesanagar uh, beach, and uh, we go around picking the waste, usually plastic waste, uh, as part of a volunteer group. Will you briefly tell me what is blue flag certification? Sir, uh, blue flag certification is an uh, ecotourism label for uh, beaches, which is uh, given by an uh, organization from Europe. Uh, it, it is basically a standard for uh, ecotourism which ensures uh, beach clean, cleanliness and uh, facilities. Be louder, be louder. But again, voice is going down. Oh. Yes, sir. Uh, so, blue flag certification uh, is a standard for beaches set by uh, a European organization for ecotourism. Uh, it ensures that uh, beaches meet some minimum levels of hygiene and cleanliness and have uh, minimum facilities for tourists in an eco-friendly manner. Okay, okay, okay. And lake cleanup? Yes, sir. Uh, as part of an organization called the uh, Environmental Foundation of India, uh, we go for we go around lakes in Chennai and uh, and uh, clean up the clean them up. Okay. Which geographic bodies are called as kidneys of the ecosystem? Kidneys of the ecosystem would be wetlands. Sir. Yes, very right. Very right. The wetlands are called the kidneys of the ecosystem. Okay, why they are called so? Uh, because they purify the water, uh, they absorb water like a sponge and purify them and hold them for uh, dry seasons. And what is the international, uh, uh, organ, organ, the international uh, uh, organization? which uh, certifies this uh, uh, wetlands? Uh, sir, the Ramsar Convention. Ramsar Convention? Yes, sir. Where is Ramsar? Uh, Ramsar is a city in uh, Iran where the convention was ratified. I mean... Uh, Since it, it, it gives certification regarding water bodies, okay, or uh, this, uh, whatever you call it, uh, it must be near a very big water body. Uh, that I'm not sure, sir. So, Ramsar, is on which water? Is on which water body? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Sir. You have heard of Caspian Lake? Caspian Lake, yes, sir. Is, is it near that? Yes, sir. It is. It borders Iran. Acha, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Glasgow. We had the conference of parties 16 last year. Yes, sir. Okay. What were the major discussions there? Sir, I am not able to recollect it right now. Glasgow, COP 16. Yes, sir. Last October, yes, November. Uh, you haven't properly remembered that? Uh, what are the major things like a global methane place or the one world, one greed and uh, one, one song, one world, one greed like that? Those, those are the major things. Yes, sir. And uh, zero emission by, by what date? Uh, India announced by 2017. Other countries, most of the countries, they, they agreed to? Uh, most of the countries. Uh, 
I think by 2050. 2050, most mostly. Okay. So what was what was India's position there? India's position was that uh, as a developing country, we needed more uh, space to uh, meet our emission goals, and uh, uh, developed countries have a historical responsibility to curb their emissions. So India should be given more time to reach net zero. Your voice is going down. Please. Uh, okay. Speak louder, speak louder, because uh, you are not properly audible to me. Yes, sir. So, India's position was that uh, as a developing nation, India had uh, uh, needed more space and time to reach its uh, net zero goal. And uh, developed countries have a historical responsibility to, uh, uh, to take more of the, uh, they have a more, uh, they, they need to play a larger role. Uh, in curbing emissions. So for that, for, for taking this position that uh, we will not uh, phase out coal, we will slowly, slowly phase down, hmm. India was criticized as a spoiler. Yes. Do you agree with, uh, with their views, with the Western views? No, sir. Uh, as, as a developing nation, India needs uh, time to give, uh, uh, to eliminate poverty and to ensure uh, equality. India needs more, uh, India doesn't have uh, much options, they can't eliminate, we can't eliminate coal uh, straight away, so we need more time. What about methane? I'm sorry sir. Methane, methane also, the methane pledge India did not sign. Uh, I didn't get the… India did not sign the methane pledge. Yes sir. Why, why India didn't sign? That I am not able to recollect, sir. Yeah, because India also emits a lot of methane from agriculture yes. and from the livestock. Mm. Okay. So, um, India said uh, it is impossible for us because agriculture is our main stay. Mm. It is agriculture that drives our economy yes. huh? and, the, and the livestock also. Mm. Okay. So, uh, because of, uh, because of the, uh, the, we, have, we are also very high up in the, in the livestock population. Yes. Okay, so these are the major, these are the major reasons as to why we can't stop them. Okay. okay. So there is a difference between a rich man's emission and a poor man's emission. Yes. What is the difference? A poor man would emit uh, more carbon dioxide per capita, and uh, his needs would be more uh, not out of necessity. While uh, I mean, a poor man would emit less emissions per capita, and his needs would be to meet his basic needs. Emissions would be to be, uh, meet his basic needs, while a rich man will have higher emissions and uh, it would not be mostly out of, not for necessity. In 1990s, okay, India was criticized for this, for methane emission, but India replied that our emission is for the poorest of the poor, they need it for their, uh, for their living. So you, you can't reduce it, you can't st stop it. Okay, so our emission is a poor man's emission for, for their living. Okay, so, so this can be compared to the Western countries' emissions. Yes, sir. So both the emissions cannot be compared. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Mr. Aza, yes, sir. you are from IIT. Yes. You are sweating a lot. Uh, huh? It was very hot also. I just arrived. You are doing well. You don't have to wait for 10 minutes. So, you prioritize your 8 point, uh, eight point What was the job you worked almost for a year? Yes, sir. Uh, my, uh, my work was in the field of uh, projection display. Uh, so, Texas Instruments has a, has its own technology. As chairperson has pointed out two times, your voice goes down. Okay. Uh, my work was in the field of projection display. And, and Texas Instruments has its own uh, technology for projectors. Uh, most other companies use LCD technology. Uh, Texas Instruments has its own technology called DLP. So my work was in this field and uh, specifically my role was uh, to support customers, uh, global customers around uh, TIS customers and in case they face any issues related to, to, to DLP products, I have to solve their issues. That was my role. Right. So you also went for trekking. Yes. Now tell me, as a student of forestry, uh, what have been your observation when you went for trekking? My observation, I, I mostly trekked around Chennai and uh, my observation would be that uh, 
uh, forests around this region are mostly uh, made of thorny shrubs. And uh, that was it. This was, this was before I started preparation. Most of my trekking was before I started preparation. So, that does not mean you should not prepare after that. Yes, sir. But that also does not mean that once you're studying forestry, you should have related to what you have seen. Yes, sir. Tell us about IIT Madras uh, and the surrounding in terms of forestry. IIT Madras was originally carved out of the Gindi National Park and uh, it is one of the uh, last remaining patches of dry evergreen forests. Mm, it is known for its uh, black buck and deer population. And uh, the adjoining Gindi National Park is one of the, is the smallest uh, national park in the country and it's one of the very few within the city limits. The voice is going down. Yeah. In context too, because you're not talking about the Context to the uh, um, cyclone, uh, how is uh, uh, avenue trees on the trees in the coastal areas or avenue trees, particularly in Chennai? What are the types of avenue trees do you suggest or uh, we can prevent the impact of the cyclone? Also, talk about the avenue trees which you have in Chennai. Sir, I'm not very sure about uh, species which are used in Chennai. At least uh, you should name one or two. Uh, uh, Tamarinda syndica, probably. Uh, Sorry? Tamarinda syndica. That's not very common in uh, Chennai. I mean, not really uh, uh, is more common here. Uh, ideally, to prevent cyclones, we would uh, go for uh, Prieto fights. But since Chennai is a water starved region, uh, Prieto fights would also. Uh, Sorry, speak loudly. Ideally, we, we should go for uh, Prieto fights hmm. since they have deeper roots and can withstand better withstand cyclones. But since Chennai is a uh, water scarce region, uh, that would be counterproductive in terms of uh, reducing the water. It's not me or them. It is about the native species which have been growing here for uh, ages. Yes, sir. So that is the kind of answers you should keep focus on. It's not that they are introducing. What is the criticism of um, uh, this? Uh, you, you have seen this kind of forest which is there in Chennai. We have created this uh, forest. Uh, what is that name? Uh, Miyawaki. Ah, Miyawaki forest. What is the criticism of Miyawaki forest? I am not. Uh, are there any criticism? Yes, there are criticisms, but I am not. Uh, yeah, what can be the criticism? Possibly that. Uh, these forests are uh, grown very in a very dense fashion. But it's growing fine. Yes, sir. Uh, another could be that uh, it is not really a new technique. It's, uh, All right. So my second question would be, since you are into ocean cleaning, and tell us about ocean degradation. Plastic pollution is one of the, in fact, it's not a major considering the other major problems which ocean is facing. Tell us about uh, different ways by which ocean is getting degraded. Uh, oil spills. Uh, Those are events. Yes. Let's talk about ocean warming, let's talk about ocean acidification and so on. Yes sir, so due to climate change, uh, ocean sea water uh, temperature levels are rising and uh, this in turn means that water absorbs more CO2 and uh, becomes more acidified. So this leads to events like coral, coral bleaching and uh, marine life finds it difficult to thrive. How serious is coral be bleaching? Coral bleaching uh, is a major issue. Uh, how serious I think I am not able to quantify it. Alright, so the next question would be, what is uh, static electricity and uh, do you, what is the application of static electricity and do you see static electricity in uh, nature? Static electricity uh, is accumulated charge, which it is not flowing like a current electricity. So, uh, static electricity is found in nature, for example. Uh, First answer the second part of the question, what is the application, do, do we have any applications? Applications. Alright, third. Yes, so static electricity is found uh, like in silk 
and some textiles, even uh, in some natural materials that I am not able to recollect the exact materials. Lightning is a major example of static electricity rotation. Yes, sir. But that is natural phenomena. Do you see static electricity being used by species? All right, I think that's difficult. Let's uh, just last question here. Uh, from uh, if you look at the battery technology, how it has developed, mm -hmm. so uh, lead ion to uh, lithium uh, based uh, batteries, it has taken long time. There's not been much uh, innovations which is happening in battery technology yeah. compared to let's say semiconductors and the way it has developed through Moore's law and so on. Mm -hmm. What is the reason why battery technology has not developed? Mm -hmm. uh, so. One major reason could be that uh, safety is a major issue when it comes to batteries. No, that is the issue now. What is the reason why innovations have not happened as much compared to semiconductor? Mm -hmm. You see, it moves, uh, if you look at yes. electronics, it has developed so fast. Mm -hmm. The intensity or density of uh, you know transistors in the chip has multiplied. Yes. Now it has reached a quantum level. Whereas in battery, it has not done much well. Is it a fair comparison? Industry is an exception in terms of how they, how fast they grew. Uh, All right, thank you. Uh, as Mr. Mohammad, you have, you do, you have been doing beach uh, cleanup, right? Not uh, recently. So during college days, I was involved in that, but now because of preparation. What are some of the ways you find in the beach? Mostly plastic waste, and glass bottles. How does this beach pollution affects the environment? Uh, it affects the organisms living in beach, like uh, olive red leaf turtles, and uh, even uh, dogs sometimes eat uh, plastic and, and get affected. Olive red leaf turtles is found in Chennai or Tamil Nadu? Where it is found? It is found uh, throughout India, so from Chennai to Odisha. Which beach? In Chennai, it is found uh, in Tiruvannamalai beach. Olive red leaf turtles is found in Tiruvannamalai uh, beach during the hatching season. Sometimes there is one beach in Odisha where it is found. Yes, sir. Uh, the Gahir Mata Beach in uh, Rushikulia. Okay. Uh, what is the temperature conditions under which corals survive? Climatic conditions. Uh, corals. Uh, corals usually survive in uh, moderately warm temperatures, tropic regions. Tropic, it is not found in temperate. It is also found in temperate, uh, deep water corals are found in temperate regions, but uh, majority of corals are found in high Where in India corals are found? Corals are found in uh, almost all, uh, all coastal states. Uh, in almost the, all coastal areas. Uh, is it found in Gujarat coast? Yes, in the Gulf of Pets region. Maharashtra? Maharashtra also there is, uh, I am not able to recall the name, but it is small patches of corals are found in, of Maharashtra coast. Okay. How lakes are formed? Can you give a geographical reason? The lakes are formed uh, by many uh, regions. Uh, one being would be glacial lakes which are formed uh, in uh, glaciers melt. Another, uh, another uh, region would be when uh, depressions fill up with water. What causes a depression? Uh, any, com any form of uh, geological movement or even sometimes uh, human causes like mining causes depression. No, mining is an anthropogenic factor. Yes, what causes, uh, I'm asking the geographical factors. Okay, leave it. How estuaries are formed? Estuaries are uh, formed when uh, when coastal water and uh, fresh water meet, usually close to the Fresh rivers. water? Yes, sir. What is the ecological importance in uh, estuaries? Estuaries have a higher biological diversity than in the surrounding regions. Name some of the estuaries in India. Can you name some of the estuaries? Uh, we have the Pulikat estuary nearby. Pulikat Lake is an estuary? There is a, I, I think there is an estuary near the lake. Okay. 
you have been appointed as a dfo in a district there is a forest fire in your district what will be your uh, preliminary steps that you will take so the first step i would take would be to limit the forest fire to a specific region how so uh, we can clear the surrounding areas close to the fire so that uh, fire is limited to a specific region and does not spread across the forest the fire is spreading very rapidly how can you limit it it's a natural phenomenon how can you limit it so another option would be to start a counter fire in the opposite direction but uh, that would be a risky move so Don't you think of firstly evacuating the people? Yes, sir. Definitely evacuating the people will be. Hi, Master. Hello. Sir. Good morning. How do you prefer civil service? Uh, prefer civil service. So I specifically prefer uh, forest service because uh, uh, I. I felt a corporate job wouldn't be fulfilling for me, and I wanted to spend. Uh, I wanted a career where I, could, where I could spend more time outdoors. So, so I felt. Student of no, sir. I'm student of electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. My optional was agricultural engineering for this exam. Azad means uh, independence in uh, Persian. Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, reasonable restrictions are uh, necessary for uh, uh, for national security reasons and. Uh, but uh, i would say any fundamental right has to have some reasonable restrictions in order to prevent misuse but sir america has restrictions but sir america has restrictions uh, sir america i would say has a culture has a more uh, liberal culture of free speech whereas uh, indian culture has a uh, in terms of indian culture we have a uh, free speech with uh, certain limitations so Sir, I'm not aware of the First Amendment in America. It is uh, vaguely defined. So then, how can we be free? No, what we should not. Sir, I would say it is. Uh, I would say it's more of uh, something we should. Uh, something we should determine by judgment and uh, in case of any conflict i think uh, it has to be interpreted by the judiciary speak loudly sir uh, yes sir so it is i think it is something that has to be uh, decided by individual judgment and uh, in case of any conflict i think it will be decided by the yes sir it is things like that then there will be no peace Yes, sir. In that case, I think we have to abide by the decision of the judiciary. For all the people, already there is a huge amount of such cases. Yes, sir. Is it not the duty of the legislature? Is it not the duty of the judiciary? I should be different or on the judiciary. Yes, sir. Definitely, I believe. Uh, while in the constitution is more uh, it is vaguely defined i think uh, the ex legislature can pass laws to define such things and reduce the vagueness 
Till the time we people have to depend on the mercy of officers, civil servants, civil servants officers, that is the most important. So I think civil servants can be more sensitive in handling such issues and take a people centric approach. What will you do if a complaint against me comes to you? What will you do? I have written an article about the economic crisis in Sri Lanka and what will you say in Sri Lanka? There is a reasonable discussion about friendship with the neighbors. Yes, sir. It is not defined. Mm. If a complaint comes to you, Sir, uh, if what is what has been written is uh, factually true and uh, nothing, no, no, some kind of distortion, then I would not take any action. Sir. It may be true. Now it is true. But it affects the relationship between India and uh, Sri Lanka. Let alone the economic crisis. Sir, in the internal struggles in Sri Lanka. Sir, sir, as long as it is factually true, I wouldn't take any action, but I would, uh, it is something which has to be handled uh, in diplomatically with the uh, with Sri Lanka by our diplomats. With every assault on creativity, space for experiments and research is shrinking. It's important for the market in society. Uh, sir, can you ask the question again? With every clash or every attack, or with every assault on creativity, or freedom of expression. Space for experiments and research is shrinking. Is it good for democracy? No, sir. Uh, I think in a democracy, we need more voices, uh, and uh, we should allow more voices to be expressed, and more uh, opinions to be heard. You have to look at the uh, camera. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, Azad. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. So, Azad, my first question is, um, in fact, India and Denmark had signed uh, a bunch of agreements in the last week. So, one of it is called Green Pact. Would, are you aware of what agreements were signed and what they mean by Green Pact? Uh, no, sir. I'm not aware of it. Okay. And uh, are you aware of what um, Arabu Tamil is? Uh, sir, can you repeat that? Arabu, uh, Arabu Tamil. Arabu Tamil. No, sir, I'm not aware of it. it it's something to do with Arabic and Tamil. Uh, does it does it strike? Does, does anything strike your mind? No, sir. Okay, so uh, I mean, in the last week, we have seen this issue uh, of you know banning certain food items or excluding certain food items in a in a biryani festival, isn't it? In a food festival in the Ambo district. So, what is your opinion on that? Sir, I'm not aware of the, the specific issue that you're referring to. The specific issue was you know pork and beef biryanis have been excluded from the menu by the district uh, magistrate and uh, the, uh, the the commission on scheduled castes has uh, sort of called it uh, you know untouchability and then summoned the district magistrate uh, sir i believe the community in question uh, is uh, is used to, accustomed to having pork and beef so 
uh, I believe that is a form of imposition of uh, food habits on them. Okay. So, uh, do you know uh, what BEPS means? Base um, base erosion profit sharing. Yes, sir. Uh, basically. Yeah, can you please explain? Yes, sir. It is basically companies uh, shift their headquarters from one country to another in order to avoid paying taxes in the country where they uh, make revenues. So they shift their headquarters to a, uh, to a country where the income taxes are lower. Okay, can you think of any examples in the recent past about, uh, in the context of BEPS? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, sir. Thank you. Please give your feedback. So my feedback. Feedback, Azam. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, in fact, Chairman, sir, was repeating it again. Uh, I mean, and also honorable panel members before me also were saying it, which is your voice needs to be louder and a lot more modulated. I think uh, that's my humble submission. And on the second point, which is, you know, you're trying to um, become uh, you know uh, the forest service or a forest service officer and it makes sense to sort of you know keep in touch or keep abreast with current affairs especially because the scandinavian countries and the agreements that you sign uh, the green pact etc in fact uh, in the within this green pact health is also treated as a part of the green partnership which means uh, you know um, india has agreed to join the international center for microbial resistance um, and uh, you know, uh, Denmark has uh, said that it will help us with global uh, digital health partnerships. So please keep abreast with current affairs on environmental issues. And they also spoke about green shipping. So all these six agreements that have been signed with Denmark are very important, especially in the law, in the context of technology transfer and uh, you know partnerships on these lines. And uh, and the same thing, right? I mean, Ambur, the festival, etc. I mean, these are uh, very current affairs issues. I mean, Arabu Tamil, I don't really expect you to sort of know it also. It's more of, you know, a culture aspect. And just for uh, trivia's sake, if I were to sort of tell you, Arabu Tamil is uh, Tamil written in Arabic script. So it is a part of uh, the syncretic traditions that are followed in Tamil Nadu. And there is a version called Arabu Malayalam also uh, in Kerala that has been followed. So this is how, uh, right from the Muplas uh, in Kerala, or let's say the Labbais, or all these Tamils in Tamil Nadu have uh, have a very uh, rooted native culture. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, this is just for your information. But otherwise, stay abreast with current affairs. You know, uh, the questions that you are answering are answering well, but it needs to be a lot more modulated. Thank you. All the very best. Thank you very much. All right, uh, so Mr. Azad, uh, you have to speak loudly and uh, you have uh, more than a month to prepare. So go out and speak loudly, yeah? scream, because your voice is very low, it will not help. Okay. Because you will not be evaluated and uh, you will not be given responsible positions if you are not able to make yourself clear. Right, and uh, also uh, there is a lot of uh, preparation needed in terms of your knowledge base also. Because uh, whatever is asked is asked from the DAF. The whole ocean issue started because you mentioned about ocean and lake clean. So, what all questions can you anticipate, right? And uh, about uh, climate change is something which is very important issue. You should be having basic uh, knowledge and uh, forestry trees because trekking. What are the trees do you observe and so on? So, uh, Chennai had the cyclone. So, what are the avenue trees? You have done forestry. You should be able to come out with one. Another. See, after one or two, 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 two or three trees, nobody is bothered. But you are not able to bring one tree is a serious. Uh, because this, and also when you are talking about uh, trekking and shrub, shrubs and you know, you could have started off with your IIT Madras uh, campus itself and surrounding because that is a very vibrant place. Right. Because you are not interacting. It seems that uh, you are very defensive. 
you need to be more open you need to take initiative that is what i'm asking you could uh, bring more knowledge to it and try to lead us to you know that that kind of initiative is needed you're just answering question and stopping like uh, i was asking tracking but you said yeah it is stubby and foggy and that's it but you have to take the initiative sir uh, but i also saw certain trees and so on and but this interaction is limited right and you have to be proactive all right no so much that he there is lot of improvements which you have to do yeah you are not uh, looking at the entire pattern because point and you are uh, looking at the person who is asking the question and you have to raise your voice if you are not raising your voice uh, it is like to difficult to be you are not at all smiling okay and one thing is if you are asking the question as you have to ask please in one instant you can you repeat it it's not the way that you should plan and uh, do companies pay the income tax or uh, some other tax uh, they pay corporate tax no. so corporate. you mentioned income tax right so don't make those kind of uh, uh, you, you have to do a lot do a lot of mirror speak okay speak in front of the mirror raise your confidence and even if you are not uh, knowing the please do not beat her up just say politely and truly that sir i am not aware even if this was the simplest uh, question but uh, see this uh, forest fires i was not impressed impressed with your answer coral bleaching you all mentioned those words corals and all okay and lakes how lakes are formed you were telling depression like like because of the tectonic movements caused by the geothermal Okay. So, prepare a list of questions from your tab, which can be possible, and then uh, prepare answers for them. Okay. But the other way is like make a note of these corrections because you have got a good academic uh, um, thing. You have to, uh, in order to become a civil servant, you have to be confident and raise your voice and be more. Uh, Thank you, sir. See, I told you first three times that you have to raise your voice. Okay, so then I discontinue because then what impression I have? I have an impression that he doesn't listen to me. He doesn't listen to me. our job is to improve you. Okay, so raise your voice because it's a conversation. You must be audible, and all the other persons who are sitting there, they are all older persons. Okay, so it it must you must be properly audible to them. Okay, it's a conversation, and you must be properly heard. Okay, then uh, about this uh, Ramsar site, etc. Find out where is Ramsar. There is what what probably and Montrex record. Where is Montrex? That you must find out because uh, that takes care of. Uh, is ramsar site so you know, how we have done in your or how we have done the deterioration so find out that is in uh, somewhere near in the switzerland lake geneva or something on the sea somewhere you just find out what we have to so show some little more detail here. if you if you speak in a low voice you know, your voice was almost uh, uh, about whis- uh, about to whisper okay so uh, so you you read it because you are communicating So your communication is not complete unless you speak in a in a in a, in a, in a, in a good or even voice. That will that will give an impression as if uh, as if you don't have confidence. Okay, and confidence is the main thing in an interview. Okay, and you told about Rusikulia Rusikulia uh, that beach in what connection? Uh, Olive Ridley Turtles. Olive Ridley. In Odisha, there is another place which is more famous. Uh, that is Gohin Mata. It became fast famous. Gohi Mata, you should not give that wrong. You mentioned Gohi Mata. You mentioned, you mentioned it? Yes, sir. Gohi Mata, 40 years back, that was the first place because we at that time saw the chief minister Jani Kumar Patnaik going and seeing <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, so, some of them. So that was the that was the first famous place. Okay, then this is Gohi Mata, a small river near Gorampur, just close into the Bay of Bengal. So they are uh, in the mouth of it. Uh, this uh, olive little they. Everyone best. Okay, so there are many other places also. And, and you uh, mentioned all of them. Yes, 
problem to learn your technique. Is it wrong doing it here? Yes, sir. During uh, uh, there are certain seasons when uh, you conduct turtle walks and uh, you have to turtle legs. It's because of soft temperature of the place. See, water temperature. That's why they come from thousands of kilometers away. And they, they lay their eggs and then they, they go back. You could also talk about uh, light pollution in context volume. Yes. Particularly LED lights and how it is disturbed. Okay, okay. So, pre, but uh, your knowledge is good, improve it, and but voice must be improved. Voice must be improved. We must talk in loud voice. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you.